I've spent my last two decades uh, in Silicon Valley in high-tech companies like Altera, Juniper Network Service now, and last eight years at Nutanix. Um, I lead a globally distributed team in the areas of SIAM, subscription, e-commerce, API management, machine learning, also DevOps and architecture. Uh, today, I'm joined by Amitesh, who is my colleague. Amitesh, do you want to introduce yourself? Thanks, Manoj. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining. Uh, I'm Amitesh Madhur. With over 18 years of experience, that includes uh, companies like Yahoo, Cisco, and Nutanix. I'm here at Nutanix for over six years and uh, have contributed to multiple uh, Nutanix products. And currently, I am uh, leading Nutanix's CIM platform called My Nutanix. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Do you want to go to the next slide, Amitesh? Cool. I think before we intro, we do want to do a quick intro of uh, who Nutanix is. Most of you have heard of Nutanix. I think uh, we are a pioneers in hyperconverged infrastructure with the industry leading NPS score of 90 plus for the last seven years. Um, our mission is to delight our customers with more open, simple, hybrid, multi-cloud software platform um, where they can run their apps uh, without worrying about which cloud or public cloud, private cloud, you know. Uh, so. Uh, basically enabling our customers to run their apps, um, which will enable their digital transformation, okay? Uh, it has been an incredible jo journey to see Nutanix grow from few hundred people to 6,000 people and 1.5 billion. Uh, we love to share our success story, you know? Uh, that's it about Nutanix. Uh, next slide, please, Amitish. Cool. So what do we want to talk today? So today we want to go over the current state of Siam at Nutanix, uh, but mainly we want to pivot about the most exciting technologies in the Siam space, mainly passwordless authentication, adaptive authentication, and uh, the role of APIs and developers in Siam. So those are the three areas we'll be focusing on. Um, so we can go to the next slide. Cool. So a lot of us are familiar with, you know, the core Siam pil uh, pillars actually, you know, with the pandemic, uh, the adoption of online engagement, the apps, people buying, uh, uh, people online experience basically, interacting with various devices and application, you know, increased. Uh, which also means we have to provide them a frictionless and a secure experience. And I say Siam plays a big role in the front and central to the digital transformation journey, right? So we have a fairly matured implementation at Nutanix. Uh, we call it the My Nutanix platform. We have WSO2 identity server as one of the core components of our SIAM solution. Other than that, you can talk about the core pillars, authentication, authorization, uh, SAML, or the standard protocols. We allow customers to bring their own identity providers uh, to access Nutanix cloud products and services. We have an API, API management, key management for developers to access our services. Uh, we are fairly scalable, available, multi-AZ deployment for, uh, of our SIAM solutions. So does we have a great integration with marketing, e-commerce, subscription platform. I think privacy and consent management is also a big part of the SIAM solution, uh, but that's an area we need to more do a lot of automation integration actually. But today we will focus on three things that are bolded on the slide here, uh, mainly passwordless ad authentication, adaptive authentication, and APIs. So Amitesh, uh, uh, can we go deeper into more what we are doing in terms of FIDO and fi uh, passwordless authentication? to enable frictionless customer experience. Sure, thanks, thanks, Manoj. Thanks uh, uh, for the, this question. Uh, so so uh, we have been using uh, username and password-based authentication for decades. And uh, with, the, with the high compute, high memory, and high bandwidth getting cheaper and cheaper, it is making uh, attackers to deal with uh, username, password-based authentication uh, in much easier way like uh, they can they can easily attack on these uh, uh, username password today so uh, in year 2019 w3c and uh, fast identity online they collaborated and they created a spec called web authentication web authentication is also known as web authen so the web authen along with client to authenticate protocol and uh, when these two includes, it creates a FIDO2 standard. 
so fido 2 enables uh, users to use their phone their uh, ub key devices or any other security key to to uh, perform the authentication and this is reducing the the, uh, the use of username password based authentication and increasing focus more on the device based approach web authent is a set of api that sits in the client side in the in the web browser and provides easy interface for the web server and the and the clients to communicate then uh, this uh, this concept is that something that user have something that user is they they use that instead of something that user knows something that user knows is the username password which is kind of shared secret which is we all know that passwords can be weak passwords can there can be default password that a lot of users may use the passwords can be stolen and a uh, password uh, is also shared between the user and uh, and the and the web service provider and the same password can be used at multiple web, web services so uh, so uh, something that a user have is is uh, is promoted by uh, web authen web authen uses this uh, uh, uses this over the traditional way of authenticating like like password so we all know that the username and passwords are not not the secure way right so uh, it, it, it how how do we go ahead and uh, uh, increase the increase the uh, complex even if we go ahead and increase the complexity of your password this is going to actually uh, create more problem for our users and make the attackers life easy because then users start using the same password everywhere else so let's look at the benefits of the web authen from the four different uh, perspective one is the convenience the second one is security scalability and privacy so if you look at the uh, fido2 from privacy angle so uh, any any uh, key that is generated any credential that is generated by the fido2 on web authen that uh, that is unique for every website that user is registering to so there is no uh, such information that goes out of the biometric information that goes out of the user's device so it is it it has very high uh, value in privacy there is there is a lot of convenience also because user is not entering this in information manually user uh, just provide some gesture and that that works as input so it is very convenient compared to the username password plus mfa approach it is also secure because uh, it is it is based on the input real time biometric input and uh, a combination with the the challenge that comes from the client to uh, to create the sign, signed authentication so fido2 is very high on security convenience scalability as well because uh, uh, fido2 is widely supported in all other web browsers uh, in majority of the browsers today um i think that was a great uh, introduction basically around uh, passwordless auth and how fido2 can be used now that uh, given the digital transformation and how customers are accessing apps from various locations and devices, right? Uh, we talk about frictionless experience, but they, at the same time, how do we ensure that we enhance the security depending upon the device, location, and time of our users' login? Can we talk a little more about adaptive authentication? Sure, Manoj. So, uh, before I dive into the adaptive authentication, let me explain this a picture here, this graph here. So, this graph is trying to explain the uh, the security uh, risk levels, like starting from the zero risk to one, two, three, and then this graph also has the various uh, behavior and the time of the when user logs in or the location from where they log in. So this is one picture that shows everything. So let me go ahead and deep dive uh, in a stepwise. 
So one of the major trends that we see is adaptive authentication. Adaptive authentication is the idea that uh, all user uh, carries all all user action actually does not carry the same amount of risk. So uh, the user logging in, uh, user logging in a nine to five every day is not as risky as a uh, user logging in in some odd hours. But user user uh, uh, performing the user performing some uh, view operation on some of the resources, which is not as risky as uh, changing those resources, editing or deleting those resources. So there are various angles to look at it. Well, uh, this adaptive authentication goes by actually many names. So some people call it the context-based authentication. Some people call it risk-based authentication some uh, conditional authentication some say location based authentication but and some uh, of the new concepts like behavioral authentication all these names are actually part of one big umbrella of uh, of uh, this adaptive authentication but the whole idea of adaptive authentication is that that not uh, we we trust the uh, we look at the historical information of the user and uh, then we establish the trust on the data. And then when, the, when we see the change in the behavior, we escalate the security level. So let's look at some of the examples here, right? So if one, one of the example, like I talked, that user logging in during nine to five window, that's the zero risk zone. As the time changes, there can be, uh, there can, this can be uh, possibly uh, risky login. Similarly, user logging in Monday to Friday, but uh, if we see suddenly on Sunday, that can also be in the risk area. The, the third one is the location based. So user logging in from a particular location, which is uh, the zero risk zone again, but if user logs in suddenly from different uh, area, different locations, that can also be an alarming situation. So uh, with FIDO2, like we talked just now, this becomes more convenient and more easy to uh, get the location information, the user's geolocation. And then there are some behavior related stuff as well, like uh, uh, whether the user has remembered the username and password when they log in with remembered username password, we know that user has not typed anything and that's how every time our user is logging in and then uh, suddenly if there is a manual uh, typing of the username password that could also possibly be an alarming situation then uh, we also have like uh, slow typing let's say i work at nutanix and i can type nutanix uh, I type Nutanix uh, many times every day. So my typing is paid for the new word Nutanix will be much faster compared to somebody else who is trying to uh, type the type my user ID. So uh, that if, I'm not saying that we should be developing some uh, keylogger, but having the idea of the time, like the keystroke and the time uh, time gap between each keystroke and taking that information can also possibly help us in implementing adaptive authentication. Similarly, for the for the mouse move pattern. So uh, mouse move is something that uh, when user manually moves versus some automated uh, test is moving it. So uh, there are libraries that do this. Uh, this can also be a, a, an alarming situation. And there are also some related to the apps that what apps are using. Okay. So, uh, that was great insight into how adaptive authentication and various forms of adaptive authentication. Uh, we know that the CIAM or the CIAM stack is more moving from a traditional IT stack to a more developer friendly platform, right? Um, and uh, there are solutions which is IDA solution basically, right? Uh, most of the vendors where it's very developer focused actually. I know that Asanka is following up with a great talk on APIs and digital information after our talk actually. Uh, so how are we enabling API capabilities on our Siam platform? What are the what are the core pillars around that? Do you want to touch base on that? Sure, Manoj, yes. Uh, that's, a, that's a great uh, point uh, even today in 
2021. Like, so when uh, we were thinking about this topic, I, I thought of discussing it in two different parts. The part one up here is what a CIM platform should look like. What is that a CIM platform should offer to, to the customer? And the second part is something that developers like, how developers uh, would like to interact with any other API other than CIM as well, how they uh, interact with that. And overall, I totally see that developer interaction or the CIM is all uh, uh, secure. Whenever there is a security, this kind of uh, relates to IAM uh, completely. So it, this will be very relevant to talk about. Uh, let me start talking about the first part, how, what CIM platform should offer to its customer and wh what they are ex exactly expecting. So we know that a lot of these CIM systems are built over time and uh, they have matured. But uh, now uh, people want it in the microservices approach so that they don't have to test everything they can test in auto isolation. They can release in isolation. They, uh, if a change is ha has happened in MFA, should not impact the tenants, and they should not be testing the other unrelated uh, component when there is no change there. But today, if uh, in a monolith approach, uh, uh, we we developers have to go and uh, for any new change implementation or any updates on security. They have to go and test everything. So uh, this becomes very crucial at this point that we start thinking of moving to micro, more microservice approach, more uh, uh, more isolated components so that it can be tested in isolation and released also in isolation. And uh, even, even better uh, management from the maintenance perspective that the different team can maintain different part of the CIM platform. Definitely, we still want RESTful. RESTful is still relevant in year 2021, that uh, APIs must be RESTful. And a lot of communication that can happen on RESTful API should stay on the RESTful API, rather than, uh, uh, rather than having uh, different approaches of, uh, of uh, interacting with data. The fourth point is the decouple and flexible. I know that decouple and flexible is a very uh, big term and it encapsulates a lot of lot many things, but I would like to bring very specific example here that what I mean by de decouple and flexible in this CIM context. So in CIM context, uh, the uh, customers, they want, they do not want to adapt to the data that CIM platform is offering. They, they have their own data structure and they would like that uh, uh, their data structure is being adapted by the platform itself. So we have to be, we, our thought process has to be uh, more decoupled with respect to the data that uh, it should be externalized and more config driven and they don't have to write additional code to adapt it. Maybe something like some JavaScript uh, based uh, mapping and configuration that lets them easily uh, include their data the way they understand, the customer understand that data. And uh, they expect that CIM platform should also expect, understand the data in the same way. The flexibility uh, part is that CIM platform should offer their customers to develop certain part of the CIM app solution. So if customer wants to implement their own MFA, let them implement and still be able to integrate with the overall ecosystem. So that was from the what customers want from the CIM platform even today. The second part is the uh, what developers like, how they like to interact with the API. So security is, of course, the first uh, priority that uh, API should be secure, but uh, they do not like uh, do not like spending a lot of time dealing with the security problem. So onboarding to the security should be very very easy, and uh, uh, and and very seamless also. So that even in the because developers interact with the dev environment mostly. 
and if the if the bootstrap time is so much they uh, they do not enjoy that part right so uh, after this the second part is the seamless key rotation the seamless key rotation is something that we are still lacking in this year 2021 because we always solve this problem of authentication through token but we miss the bigger part like how are we going to uh how are we going to rotate the key in future and even today if we try to rotate a key after 3 months there is a chance that it may break many other dependent systems in production so it is always uh, a hesitation to change the key but we should uh, we should try to think and solve this problem as well that how uh, how uh, this seamless key rotation can happen uh when when the developer starts uh interacting and writing the api at that that very point the last point is how uh nutanix at nutanix we have uh provided uh how we have tried to solve some of these problems so we provide two ways to interact our uh, inter to let our customers interact with our api those two are the api keys and the pki based approach so one where uh a uh, customer goes to my nutanix and they create api key and there is a there is a way to sign the token with that key and then uh, then call any of our api and our apis most cloud apis support this approach there is a second approach also that we offer is the is pki based where a uh, user can a uh, user can create their uh, update and save their public key with nutanix and then sign their token using their own own private key so uh, this is this is on the api uh, 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 from both the angles that i wanted to bring here cool great insights amitesh uh, hopefully in this short 20 minutes i think uh, we have given some good insight to the folks on the call around uh, future of cim future of cim trends Uh, like passwordless auth, Fido, adaptive auth, and how important it is to focus on the API API management, right? Um, so thanks again, uh, Amitesh, for sharing this talk with me. Uh, I think lastly, we also want to thank WSO2. We have been working them for past seven years, been a satisfied and happy customer working on their CIM uh, IS uh, stack. Uh, 